Hey everybody, welcome to DevTips, I'm Travis. Today is the first video in a series in which we take a project to, from the beginning all the way to the end. Every step of the way we're gonna be doing things. Today is the video on ideation and discovery. We're gonna be learning who uh, our, our product is for and we're gonna be thinking about the things that we can do to best meet their needs, okay? So uh, let's get started. Before we can do anything, before we start sketching our ideas or even thinking about how anything will look in terms of layout and features, we want to answer a few basic important questions, okay? I'm gonna use this mind mapping tool uh, to help me answer these questions with you guys. So uh, the title of this mind node is questions. Now the first question with any project is you have to answer this question, who is the owner? And then after that, it's important to answer the question of who is the audience? If you can answer these two questions with any confidence, you're on a great start, but that's not, what it, not how it ends. Once you know who the involved parties are, you have to think about what's important to them, okay? What features are important to me? And that's for the owner, but also consider the audience what features are important to them. Now these may seem like basic questions, but in order to answer them, we have to exercise our empathy, which is really, really important in web design and development. We have to put ourselves in the shoes of the people that we're designing for. If we don't do that, we're going to design the wrong thing in the wrong way every time. Okay, so we have to think about who is the owner and who is the audience. Let's just stash these questions over there and create a new one. This project is going to be a simple portfolio site. Okay, and let's answer these questions. Who is the owner? Well, uh, the owner is, in this case, the artist. Now that could be a photographer, a designer, it could be a developer. In all of these cases, this is a person creating art that they're trying to showcase. They are an artist. Now the main audience of this website, not the only audience, but the main audience, and you want to cater to the main audience, is going to be the client or the potential clients, right? Okay. Okay, so let's first put ourselves in the shoes of the artist. What does the artist really need to have? on his portfolio site, his or her portfolio site? Well, the first thing is going to be a showcase of their work, uh, a gallery of some type. After that, they're gonna definitely need a contact, a, a, a way for people to, to reach out to them. This is the purpose of a portfolio site, to show you my work, and then let's do business together. Now, it's very, very common for artists, because they're such expressive individuals, to want to inject a lot of their personality into their portfolio site. In fact, they inject a lot of personality into their very work that they do, so it makes a lot of sense that they would want to showcase not only the executables, the things that they deliver, but also themselves, because uh, when you're working with somebody uh, to create something, when you're collaborating with a client, it's important that they understand who you are and how you approach things and, and a little bit about your personality. So I want to have a kind of a section on there that in some way showcases the personality of the artist. Now that can be, uh, you know, common use cases are headshots or like an illustration of your face or something or uh, quotes from someone you admire. Oftentimes it's, an, it's like a little blurb like an about me blurb, and then, uh, you know, oftentimes you do like some, some type of like a, a, like a skills, like explaining in no uncertain terms what my skills are, kind of like a CV or something like that, you know. Now when you have your own portfolio site, there's a lot of extra things you can do. Oftentimes you'll see people have like a blog attached to it, or they'll have like their Instagram feed attached to it, or something like that. But I think that you want to make it you know, in most cases, as streamlined and focused for your desired outcome as possible. So we're not going to add any of the extra frills, at least at this point. I, I'm not thinking it's important to the artist. This is somebody who has some work, they want to show it off, and they want to get more work, okay? 
Okay, now let's exercise a little bit more empathy and put ourselves in this in the uh, in the shoes of the client. If you're shopping around for a designer or a photographer or a developer or an artist, what are the things that you're going to be looking for first? Okay, the first thing, if I'm a client, I'm going to look for is the work. Do they do good work? Is this something that I want to buy? Secondly, I want to know how to contact them. And uh, personality will come into it when you're deciding. Actually, let's move that up because personality will come into it when you're deciding if you do want to contact them. And uh, there's also a few other things. You know, it, it's such a big decision for a client to try to reach out and make that initial contact. And we can discuss this later, but sometimes I see these websites where you go in the landing page is a button that says contact me or like a form field that you can fill out to send your email address. I'm not sure if those, <clears throat> I'd like to see, you know, some analytics on it, but I'm not sure that those are very effective. I know for me personally, when I go to a new website, I'm not going to sign up for their service the instant I'm hitting their homepage. I'm going to look at their products and look at their features. I'm going to investigate their pricing structures. You know, like, is this going to be a good relationship long term with this company or person? Anyhow, that's just a side tension. What I think would be a good idea for clients to be able to see are um, some some proof, some social proof or evidence from your past clients that working you, with you was a good idea and a pleasurable experience for them. So this is often in the form of testimonials. And I think there's another thing, and it may or may not be expressed in the final design of the site, but we still want to, in this stage, we want to express our, our, our empathy and we want to explore uh, the ideas that we have concerning what we want, what we think the client would want to see. So I know from personal experience that clients are very interested on return of their investment in you, right? So ROI. And that could mean they would want to see your pricing. That could mean they would want to see what types of deliverables they are going to get. Now you'll see this a lot on on photographers, uh, you know, like a wedding photographer or something. On their websites, they'll have uh, you know different packages. You know, for this this level, the 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 bronze package, you just get like a DVD with your photos on it. With this silver package, you get three prints and whatever. And for the gold package, you get a frame and like a movie and like I don't know whatever. But deliverables are important. If you can explain things to um, to your potential client and make it really rock solid in their mind what they're getting themselves into, they're a lot likely. They're a lot more likely to to be able to feel comfortable with reaching out and and uh, and contacting you for for further discussion. Now, we talked about work, and and sometimes work. Uh, is just a few screenshots of the things that you've done just to get help people understand a, a few ideas. Sometimes, if you want to go deeper, you can talk about case studies. Now, case studies are really, really uh, useful to somebody who's making that business decision of should they hire you or not. Now, when we look over this list, we can see that there are a lot of items that are uh, repeated. Okay. Now this is not a bad thing. This is actually a really good thing. In the ideal situation, the lists are exactly the same and the and all of the stakeholders are aligned with what they're trying to accomplish. This is not always the case. In fact, it's very rarely the case. But the more alignment, the better, right? You want the artist to want the same thing as their client. You're going to have a better product that way. I think this is good for now. What we want to do mainly in this stage is understand who are the stakeholders in the project and what their needs are. So if you're the owner or the artist, you want to understand, as the creator, I want to understand them, what their needs are. They want to express themselves a lot, you know. If you are the client, I put my feet in their shoes and walk around a bit, I realize that I'm looking for information that will help me make a business decision Namely, should I hire this artist or not? So I have these two, uh, these two personas or these two stakeholders in this project, and I want to make sure that the pr the product that I 
end up with is going to meet the needs of both of them. After I have these ideas, I need to organize myself around the ideas. It's not just, it's not enough to have these things mapped out in your mind. We have to mold these ideas into an executable form, okay? And so for that, like nearly every project that I do, I use an application uh, over here, and it's a web application called Trello. Trello is free to use, and it is awesome. So these are all, um, like here's, Here's how I organize Dev Tips, the channel. I have all these ideas and I, I move them over into this you know, column to schedule. These are the ones I'm currently working on. These are ones that I've shot and stuff. This one actually was just published already. And these are the ones that I published in this quarter. So this is, this is a, a, uh, a way to track your progression in the different stages of the project, right? So let me return back here. I want to create a new board I'm going to call this portfolio. And the portfolio, so every uh, board in Trello, these are they kind of use these um, metaphors of this blue thing is the board, these are lists, and uh, I think these things are called cards, right? Okay. So they every board starts off with in a kind of in a kind of to-do fashion, but that's I want to reorganize the way that this works. So I want to say that these are going to be my ideas. And uh, they're going to they're going to be like features, and uh, okay, and this will be the where I start capturing things. And then I want to say that this will be the design column. This will be the development column, and I'll create a new one to say it's complete. Okay, so let's start loading in this first list with our ideas and features. Referring back to the, the, the ideas that we generated when we were using empathy. Okay, so the first thing that we want to capture is the fact that we want to have a showcase or a gallery. Okay, and after that, we want to make sure we got that contact. And we want to capture my personality. And uh, the client's going to want those testimonials. They're also going to want to see some return on investment. And I'm not exactly sure how that's going to execute. Now, for the contact, I want to go in there, and I can make different... I can still explore my ideas while I'm, while I'm organizing myself. So um, I definitely want to have, in the contact section, some social media... Contacts. So I'm going to make a, a list here of the social media things, the item, social media items that I think are important for the artist to have. So I'm going to start with Dribble, a Behance. Um, they're going to want LinkedIn if this is a business site. Um, if you're a developer, maybe you want some CodePen or uh, GitHub. Uh, and Twitter, of course. And then, uh, not really Facebook. Most people look at Facebook as like a more of a personal thing. Okay. And then also, there's other ways, um, you know, non-social, or non-public, I guess. I don't know. I'll say other. Uh, and that would be like a direct email. And then a lot of people prefer uh, web forms, which sends email. Okay, cool. So there's a lot of uh, different options of how somebody would contact this artist. Let's take a look at personality. How would this artist uh, express their personality and how would the client prefer to understand them? Headshots, uh, having quotes, um, about me, blurb and representing my skills in kind of like a CV fashion. All right. Looks good. Testimonials. This is good. And you can write like little descriptions in here, like a note, 
uh, and it uses markdown. So newt, I think there should be three. And then you got like this little note here. So anyway, uh, Trello is really awesome. And as I develop these things and design them, I can just mark them off and, and take them into the next category by moving one of these cards over into the next list. And, uh, and you know, sometimes I can be spread quite a bit over it depending on, depending on what I'm working on. So we're going to be using Trello quite extensively in this project to track our progress and to make sure that we stay within the, the, uh, the, the bounds or the rails or, you know, we don't kind of go out of scope with our, with our work and our features. Hmm. Okay, that's it for this video. And you'll notice that all we really did was think, right? If you were expecting us to do some designing or coding and you're kind of let down and you're sad by that, that's good. That's good because I want you to really understand that a large part of this job is just thinking and planning and organizing, right? The actual execution is, is like maybe like 20% of the actual job. So I'm purposefully not executing on any deliverables today to illustrate the point that the most important work that we do on any project will be done early on in the planning stages. This is real work. This is what will set you apart from your peers and your competitors. The ability to make a solid, reasonable plan before you jump blindly into trying to make things is a sign of maturity. You don't need to use the same tools that I use. You don't even need to think about it in the same way that I do, but you do need to think about it. You need to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you don't have a destination, and you can never arrive. Okay, next week we're gonna put this plan into action and start thinking about how these needs and features translate themselves into a UI. We're gonna do some sketching, some wireframing, and some actual visual design. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something from this video, please like it and share it and all that kind of YouTube-y stuff. And most of all, you know, just leave a comment below. I, I, you know, subscribing and sharing is good, but I like to hear from you. I really, I'm really interested in what your, your thoughts are, what your opinions are. What is your process for organizing yourself? What is your process of discovery? I'd like to know. So leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll talk to you soon.